What's up guys? This video is going to be about keyboard commands in Reason and what I have done to essentially optimize them and make them far far better because the original Reason keyboard commands suck, I think. I got Reason back in back in the days of Reason and record. Uh, I have the box down here, it's propping up my, my audio interface. You know, I feel like no software ever has legitimately good keyboard commands out of the box. Is this a problem you guys have encountered? This is, I just want to show you guys what I've done with Reason to essentially speed up my workflow immensely. And uh, I think they're awesome. Basically, the principle this comes down to is this idea that if I have my hand on my mouse and I have my hand on the left side of my keyboard, I don't have to move either of them. Every single keyboard command I could possibly want is somehow done between either my mouse or my left hand. So this video is going to be split into two parts. I want to show you what I have done with how Reason is currently set up. And I want to give some of my thoughts on what Propellerhead could do in the future to optimize keyboard commands. Because I still don't think they're perfect in terms of how I would like them. So, let's talk about what I've done inside Reason. First thing I did was go to keyboard control edit mode. This is where you can assign keyboard controls to anything that's grayed out essentially. Now you'll notice that nothing up here is grayed out. This is one of my biggest problems with Reason's keyboard commands which we will talk about later. But what I've done is I've made the stop button D. Before you had to push like shift enter to stop shift and shift and enter why that just seems so dumb then if you want to return to the start you have to push shift enter again and for the longest time that is what i did every time i wanted to stop i would go shift enter and then i realized the error of my ways and developed something better so now if i've got my cursor playing i push d to stop d to return why can we not have a single button for that right off the bat? So anyway, that's 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 improvement number one. All right, improvement number two. I made a record. I didn't even remember what record was before. Maybe command shift. I don't even know. I don't even know what record was before. But now record is a. So if I have a track record enabled and I hit a, that's going to start recording. Um. Now if you put if you push C, you get you get your click. So I made V counter because there wasn't a shortcut for that, and you know that's helpful. I also made X tap tap tempo. And another thing I do in the um, I've created my own default template session, and in the session that I've saved, I have um, the stereo mono flip set up and. <laughs> I, I haven't actually saved it in this session yet, but one thing I always do is I make this button here in um, so that when I'm mixing, I can just push one key to switch between mono or stereo. Um, <laughs> I need to I need to save that in my default session, uh, but that's another thing that I always do. That is four simple changes that I make here with Reason's keyboard command edit mode. All right, now here's where things get a little more complicated. Oh, no, wait, I have done something else. If you go keyboard command edit mode, keyboard control edit mode, it doesn't do anything in the mixer. If I go back to my sequencer, it's, it's here, but it doesn't do anything uh, in the mixer. So, what I've done is I've right clicked on this solo all off button, I've gone edit keyboard control mapping, and I've mapped that to the one key. That way if I have a bunch of tracks playing, and I've soloed one or two, I can unsolo them all just by hitting the one button, which is, which is handy. 
So, uh, I've got my track going. It's quality. Um, at least I've soloed the synth bass. Because that's probably the most interesting track here. If I want to get rid of that and go back to everything, I can just push one. Yeah. That's, that's, um, oh. That's another change that I use, that I, another keyboard command that I use all the time. G, G and H, zoom in and out. Although I tend to use command and my scroll wheel on my mouse, or command shift to zoom in and out left and right. Or just shift to scroll left and right. If you hold down alt and click, or command and click, that lets you rearrange where your uh, loop markers are. If you pull down shift and click, that changes where your end marker is. Um, and if you hold down alt and one of the arrow keys, that takes your cursor directly to either the left or the right arrow. So that's that's particularly useful. Um, okay, so let's, let's talk about where it gets complicated. I don't know how you do this on Windows, but on iOS, if you go to keyboard and then you go shortcuts and then you go app shortcuts you can actually add a shortcut specifically for an application so what I would do is I would select reason and then what you have to do is you have to type in the menu title exactly as it appears in the menu in reason so if I want to change delete I type in delete. If I want to change um, into edit mode, I should make that E. I should make into edit mode just straight E instead of command E. I might, I might make that change. That would be a good change. I might do that. So you type it in exactly. So what I've done is I have typed in hide recording meter and show recording meter and made that F1 because this used to be a setting I think and then they got rid of it which was stupid because it was handy having that as one button and I don't think you used F1 for anything useful anyway so F1 that's a good time F2 is your EQ use that all the time F3 is your browser view F4 brings up your computer keyboard thing um, F5, 6, and 7 jump between your different windows, and F8 opens up your tool window. I don't know if F9, F9 is doing anything. I think. I don't use F5, 6, 7, or 8 anymore. I'll talk about that in a second. I changed the hide and show recording meter to F1. I made delete 2 and mute or unmute clips 3 because two and three were not being used. And previously, you had to move your hand to the other side of your keyboard to hit M for muting clips, or you had to move your hand all the way over here to hit delete for deleting clips. So I thought to myself, wouldn't that be far more useful here on the left hand side of the keyboard? So those are some changes I made within Apple or within, within Mac OS's system setting thing to help me better do what I want inside Reason. The third thing that I did is uh, I have this, I have this fancy, this fancy mouse. It's a uh, Logitech MX Master 2, I think. So what you can do with this is essentially customize a whole bunch of buttons. So this mouse has a gesture button, and you can push that. And if you hold it and then move the mouse either up down, left, or right, that gives you four additional commands. It's also got a click here and a click here, and um, a few buttons over here. So, if we go to my settings for this mouse for reason, and look at what I've got. When I click the scroll wheel, it takes me to my sequencer. When I click the whatever button this is <laughs> when I click this it takes me to my rack and when I click this one here 
on the side of the mouse, it takes me to the mixer. When I click this one here, um, that's just enter. So if I'm like putting in a value somewhere and hit that, it's enter. Um, that's just horizontal scrolling. The gesture button, if I click the gesture button, it triggers F8, so that opens up my tool window. And I've also triggered different keystrokes for the four gestures. So if I hold down the gesture button and swipe my mouse down, inside reason, it triggers the P key, which automatically starts playing whatever's selected in a loop. If I push the gesture button and move my mouse up, it turns my loop function on or off. F15 and F14 are just other macro commands that I've set up on my computer so I can um, swipe between different desktops on Mac. So that's a good time. So obviously if you don't have a fancy mouse with all kinds of fun buttons, you can't do this. But if you do, and you can program your mouse, I would encourage you to do it because it's flipping awesome. Yeah, it's a good time. So, some of those, some of those things on the mouse. If I push this button, I get my mixer. If I push the scroll wheel, I get my sequencer. If I push this one here, it takes me to the rack. If I select this and hold the gesture button and go down, it starts playing the looped clip. If I hold the gesture button, swipe up, it turns off my loop. If I just tap the gesture button, it opens my tool window. So I can essentially navigate around the entire windows. <laughs> I can navigate through all the windows in Reason using, not, without even taking my hand off the mouse. Um, so when I finally programmed that, that was like game changing I think, because before I'd have to move my hand slightly over here to hit one of the F keys and then back, which, you know, is not really a big deal really. But it's just nice having every key you could possibly want to press right here underneath your left hand and the rest of the commands right here on the mouse. Um, just, it, just make, it makes producing music really, really easy and really, really fast. If you're working in a, in a piece of software at all, you want to know the keyboard commands. It makes life just just makes life worth living, you know? I also really, really love having this controller as the main kind of like hub that makes things tactile. I'm not gonna talk about that now, maybe another time. We'll talk about how I like to use controllers when I'm producing Inside Reason, but yeah. Okay, now let's talk about what I do not like about the Reason keyboard command system and you know, if you're watching this propeller head, please could you implement some of my ideas? Um, okay, first of all, it would be really, really dope to be able to do the changes that I made in the uh, Mac OS system preferences, just natively in Reason, that would be cool. Secondly, this is probably my biggest frustration with Reason's keyboard commands. I absolutely hate having to go up here and click this and then select what I want in terms of how like this is the this is the grid um, so now my grid's in a half but if I wanted my grid to be like in a quarter I have to go up here and select that or a bar I have to select that this grid function that they added is awesome because it kind of adapts but like we weren't using the number keys for anything anyway why can we not just have number keys to change the grid automatically. Ableton can do that, propeller head. Just saying. Also, you can't set a key command for the solo button here. You know how I did with the um, solo all off thing here? You can't set a keyboard command to turn the macro solo function off here. Why? That's really annoying. I'd like to be able to do that too. Those I think are probably my two biggest frustrations with Reason's key command system. Not that big, not not that not that major at all. So yeah, that's that's my that's my take on Reason's keyboard commands. Those are the keyboard commands that I use. 
those are why I think you should use the keyboard commands that I use. And uh, I mean, if you if you do produce in reason and you like some of those ideas, let me know in the comments whether you're gonna use those keyboard commands or not. Or if you use some other keyboard commands, let me know what you use, because maybe you've got an idea that I might want to incorporate. If you liked any of the music that was playing in this video, head along to my website, check it out, thedavidagenda.com, uh, or my SoundCloud, forward slash thedavidagenda. Follow me on Instagram, comment on this video, subscribe to this channel, and uh, I mean, I'll see you next time, I guess. I'm gonna be trying to do more of these videos. I wanna, I wanna be doing like a video a week or something. You know, we'll give it, we'll give it a crack. We'll see how we go. Need to be, need to be making more content. So I'll be seeing you around, I guess. Until next time. Farewell. All right, I need to. It's flipping hot in here. I need to turn my fan back on. Can, can you hear that? Can you hear that hum? Is that coming through on the fan? Okay.